Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk about the legibility of numerals. Um, I have two very brand new experiments I'd like to show you. These are carried out in collaboration with a vision scientist, uh, Sean Baptiste Bernard. Before I get on with that, uh, I'd like to talk a, little a bit about uh, the re relationship between letters and digits. So I'm going to start out with a bit of a task for you. And, and actually, I can't really see anything, so hopefully it's going to work anyway. What I want you to do is to spot the letter H on the next screen. So how many of you saw it? <laughs> a couple did, all right. Here it was. Now I want you all to spot the, the digit six. How many saw it? Yay, there you go. Many more. Here it was. So when this is carried out in a controlled experimental environment, then the same actually happens. It is much easier to spot the, a digit among letters than it is to spot a letter among letters. Uh, this has led some researchers to argue that this phenomenon uh, is related to us processing letters and digits in different places in the brain. Others have said that no, that, that is not sort of the, a brain thing. It has more to do with habits, that we are more familiar with reading letters as one unit and reading digits as another unit. Um, and to prove this, these researchers carried out a test on Canadian postal workers. And what they did was, uh, so if you see the first column, here we have regular postal workers, and they were reading letters among letters and letters among digits. As, uh, and as you can see, it took them much longer time to read the letters among letters than le uh, letters among digits. Then they had a control group of college students, and they were even more extreme on that. But interesting in this case is the last column. Here we have a foreign, male, uh, foreign male sorters who spent their everyday work day uh, looking at Canadian postal codes, where you have a mixture of letters and digits. And these guys, as you can see, the two columns are much more the same. So they're used to reading these two as, as, as the same unit. Another ex experiment that sort of follows in the same line is this one. Here the researchers uh, show, showed, uh, told the participant that a circular shape was either a zero or an O. And when they thought it was a zero, it was much easier to recognize than when they thought it was an O, even though it was the exact same uh, shape. So if this only has to do with habits, then identifying a digit among letters should be the same as identifying a letter among digits. Do you follow? Yeah? So let's see if that's the case. Yeah, we try again. So how many saw it here? All right, now you're getting good at this. <laughs> here it was. Okay, so in a controlled environment, it is the easiest is to, to identify a digit among letters than a letter among digits. This is called the numeral identification advantage. And a letter among letters, that's just horrible. So in this regard, it, it is quite interesting to look at cases related to people who, due to brain damage, has lost the ability to read. Uh, here we have several examples of people who, who uh, can't read letters, but can still read numbers. However, we have no reported examples of the opposite, where people can't read, let uh, lead, read digits, but can still read letters. On a more pers personal note, some years ago when I was giving birth to my son, I got a severe case of uh, preeclampsia, and I got a very high blood, blood pressure, which did something to my brain. And for about two weeks' time, I lost the ability to read and write. Uh, and this is actually a very close ex uh, illustration of what, how I saw letters at the time. I, I can read again. <laughs> OK, back to the numbers. So many researchers have tried to figure out what is it that makes numbers easier to identify. And what they did was that they have overlapped the, the numbers and the letters and then see if, if one is more distinct than the other. And no one has actually come up with an, a proof of that. 
I think that the reason for this is completely different, and I'd like to hear your, your, idea, your ideas about this afterwards. I think it has to do with the letters and digits having different origin. As we know, letters originate in the writing hand, and we have a lot of upwards and down strokes, which have left, left vertical strokes in, in the alphabet. And when we look at the letters, both the uppercase let alphabet and the lowercase alphabet, they have quite a lot of more uh, letters that have the vertical stro strokes compared to the, to the digits. And I think there's a good reason for this, and I think it's actually quite beneficial, because identifying a letter is not the same as reading. Reading is something else. When we read, we have the, the fixations, and between that we have the saccades, which are the movements to the next fixation. And, and my idea is that I think that the vertical strokes actually help in the rhythm of reading, and they're quite important in that sense. While when we read digits, we don't read it in the same way. Here we actually need to identify every single one. Also, when we read longer paragraphs of text, we make great use of the word and sentence structure. Therefore, because we have a, a, an experience with reading, we can, we can quite easily guess what the text is, is saying, even though that some of the letters are missing, like in this case. However, when we read digits, we have no way of knowing what is missing. So, in that sense, I think it's quite extraordinary that when you look at the collective literature on the legibility, that you have so much more on letters than you have on digits, because in that sense, legibility of digits is actually more important than the legibility of letters. So, therefore, we tried to fix that. And the first experiment here has to do with the legibility of the skeleton of the digits. What we did here was that I created different versions of, of each of these numbers within the same typeface. This is quite important when you do legibility testing, because if you, test, if you compare different typefaces, you have no way of knowing whether the results has to do with the style, the stroke contrast, the proportions, and so on. In this case, when you compare them within one typeface, then you know, for example, if you look at the two, you know that the middle one if the middle one is different from the uh, last one, then it has to do with the shape of the spine, because everything else is the same. OK, so now I'm going to show, try to show how we tested. So basically, participant looked at the spot in the middle, and then this happened. We had five participants who had 600 trials each, which equaled 3,000 tri uh, 3, trials. The, the test material was exposed at 10 degree in the peripheral field of vision, either to the right or to the bottom. This equal about, at a viewing distance of 40 centimeters, this equals 7 centimeters out. Each digit was shown at 150 milliseconds, and the size of the digit varied depending on the performance of, of the participant. So we adjusted it so that when, if they could recognize the middle character in about half of the time, then it was about 20 uh, pixels high. So what were the results? For the digit one, we found that there were significant results in favor of the narrow one compared to the two wider ones. That was quite surprising to me. Um, because previous research had actually found the, the opposite. In this case, also short exposure. The researchers tested a range of different typefaces and found the wider uh, number one was more legible than the narrow one. The difference between this study and our study is that in this case, they showed the, the characters as single characters, while we, as you know, had the three-digit uh, three, three string Research into uh, letter legibility have previously shown that there is actually a difference between when you show uh, a character in isolation and when you show them in groups. So I think what we can learn from this is that if you are designing typefaces where the number one is to be viewed in isolation, then you should probably make it wider, while if the one is to be viewed with other characters, then you should design it narrow. But why is it that it, the narrow one was better? I think that this previous study of ours might be able to explain this. 
In this case, we were looking at the, the effect of serifs on letters at distance. And what we found was that in, in regard to the letter I, the narrow one was more legible than the wider one. I think that this has to do with sort of the, our understanding of the number one and the letter I. We think of them as, as narrow. And if we suddenly see them as wide, probably we can see them easier. But if we don't see them as what they actually are, then there's no point of it. OK, so results in the three. In this case, the two top ones were more legible than the lower one. The nine. The top one more legible than the lower one again. So these two cases, I think, can be explained by this previous research. Here, the researchers, what they did was that they, they showed a lot of different uh, letter, letter forms where they had uh, sort of blurred out part of the letter. And what they found was that in, 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 in groups of letters that are easily misread for each other, there we need the parts that are actually different from each other. And this kind of makes sense. So we, you need this, the openness of the C and the crossbar of the E and so. And in relation to the 3 and the 9, here we need the, we, we need the openness for the, them to be differentiated from others like uh, 0 and 6. The result on the 7, the top one was more legible than the lower one. And as I said before, this, in these cases, it's, it's quite useful that the, letters have been, uh, the digits have been designed within the same typeface. Because here we can see that, for example, the one with the serif on the horizontal bar, that, that's the only thing that's different between that and the one that was actually better. So in this case, in this scenario, three, three strings in the peripheral field of vision, a serif on the, on the seven is not a good thing. However, if we look back at the study I was talking about before where we looked at serifs, at distance reading of letters in isolation, serifs at the vertical extremes um, actually more, make the letter more legible than, than non, uh, sans serifs. So again, this shows that when, you, when we look at legibility, it, we have to know where we're going to use the typeface because different reading situations will produce a very different results in relation to readability. So, so the data until now, all of that was significant, but sometimes it's also interesting to look at what, what wasn't significant. In this case, these three versions of the two, there was no difference between that. The four, no difference. Also the five. The six. I here I wanted to see the effect of different x height. Then we went on to look at the data in a different way. We, we, what we did was that we, we measured the, sort of the complexity of each of the digits. So by highlighting the skeleton, like here and here, and then taking the string out, then the shorter string would be the digit with, that was less complex, and the longer one would be the one that was most complex. And what we found was this almost even line, in that over here we have the less complex, uh, so, so this we measured on the three digits at the same time. So the less complex three digits, as you can see, they were almost recognized 95% of the time, while the most complex, they were only recognized 65% of the time. So following this, the top row here the collectively, the, the letters here are more legible than the lower ones, and the same here also. So what can we learn from this? Open counters, that's a good idea. And I think, obviously, that's not a surprise. Most of us already knew that when we were designing. But the second one, added details, I think that's kind of, that's kind of new to me. Quite a lot of designers who have tried to design legible typefaces, they, they take two characters that they think they're going to misread for each other, and then you, you add, add features to differentiate the two. And according to this study, that is apparently not a good idea. This should be as simple as possible. So our second experiment, here we looked at the relationship between old style digits and capital height digits. This I think would be quite, we were quite interested in because we have, these, it's, we have these two different styles of digits that we use in different uh, situations. But which one is most legible? That I think would be interesting to know. Others have looked at this as well. In this experiment, again, different typefaces, and what they found was 
that the lower one, the old style digits, were less legible than the top ones. And also, that the 0, 1, and 2 were often misread for these letters. In another experiment by Miles A. Tinker from 1930, Tinker looked at the, uh, at the distance of which these, these characters could be read. And he looked at both in isolations and in group. And in isolations, there were no difference between the old style and the capital height digits. However, in groups, the, the old style digits were more legible than the uh, capital height. So we were interested in testing this within one typeface, because as I said before, that shows you better results. And also we were interested in seeing whether the habit of reading digits had changed since the 1930s. So these were the ones that we started out comparing. I'm going to run the test again, sort of. And what we found was that if we divided the digits into two groups, then the lower one here, the capital height digits, were more legible than the x height digits. However, the non-lining digits were more legible than the capital height digits. So, yeah. So, a logical thought, ne next thought from this would be, hey, let's combine the two. <laughs> uh, so, that was what we investigated to see. So what we did was that we took the capital height uh, let, uh, digits, and then we compared them with, o, o, uh, with 0, 1, and 2, that sort of were jumping up and down. And then the, the normal uh, old style di digits for the rest. Again. And if you remember before, the non-lining digits were more legible than the capital height digits. Guess what? It's the opposite now. So, all right, what happened here? And then we, when we looked at the other group, these uh, characters, which are actually the same, now the top one is more legible than the lower one. So, I think what happened, and I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this because I'm not completely sure. I think what happened here has to do with familiarity. That we, to identify the six and seven in this case, we need the uh, zero to be x height because that's what we, we expect it to be. And the one in this case. And the two in this case. So when we looked at the original material and looked at the digits in, in so all of them together. Actually, there were no uh, statistical difference between the two. So they're equally legible. What can we learn from this? <laughs> Don't try to invent new styles, because readers actually are quite con uh, conservative, and they generally just prefer to read what they're used to reading. Thank you. <laughs>